Yes, so thanks for the introduction and welcome to my presentation. My name is Petra Mosseini and together with Daniel Fett and Ralf Küsters, I did a formal security analysis of the OpenID Financial Grade API. The Financial Grade API is an authorization and authentication scheme for high risk environments. For example, for financial applications. And currently, there are many activities to open, especially financial services to third party providers. So on a high level, this looks like the following. Alice wants to authorize some application. This can also be a website for having access to our banking account. For example, for initiating payments. And this can be achieved by using the Financial Grade API. The Financial Grade API is already adopted by major banks in the UK and is one of the most promising candidates for implementing the new European Payment Services Directive, which requires by law that financial institutions offer open banking APIs for third party providers. So the Financial Grade API is essentially a hardened version of OAuth for high risk environments. Now for achieving the degree of security that is needed here, there are many new security mechanisms incorporated into the basic OAuth flow. Now what we did is we formally analyzed the Financial Grade API using the web infrastructure model, which was, which was developed by our working group. Based on this, we created a formal model of the Financial Grade API. We defined security properties. Then during the analysis, we found several attacks, not only on the Financial Grade API itself, but also on some of its new security mechanisms, which are independent of the Financial Grade API. We also provide fixes for all attacks that we found, and finally prove that the Financial Grade API within our model is secure. We are also working with the OpenID Foundation for fixing the standard. So during my presentation, we will take a look into all of these points, and we start with OAuth, on which the Financial Grade API is based. And here we start with an example. So you find OAuth on many different web pages. For example, if you have login with, with Facebook or login with Google. Here we have as an example, if this, then that, which is a popular service that automates tasks across multiple other services. For example, it lets you save your new Instagram photos to your Dropbox which of course means that if this then that needs access to your Dropbox account. Now for giving this access, the browser opens a new web page, a um, web page of Dropbox. And now at this point, Dropbox is called the authorization server. And if this then that is called the OAuth client. So what happens now is that Alice essentially logs in into Dropbox and then Dropbox asks if she wants to give if this then that access to her files and folders. So now in the background, the following happens. We have the browser, which Alice is using. Then we have the client, for example, if this then that. And we have the authorization server, for example, Dropbox. Now the flow is started at the client by sending the so-called authorization request, which is redirected by the browser to the authorization server. And here Alice logs in. And at this point, the authorization server creates a so-called authorization code. And this is sent back to the client. Using this authorization code, the client gets an access token. And finally, using this access token, the client gets access to Alice's resources. Often the authorization and resource server belong to the same organization, but in general, these can be two unrelated servers. So that's basic OAuth. As I said, uh, the Financial Grade API offers a flow for high risk environments and the attacker model that is considered here is very strong. So now we come to the attacker model according to the specification of the Financial Grade API. Of course, the first difference that you see here is that the authorization server is typically a bank and the resource server provides access to your financial data and banking account. So according to the specification of the Financial Grade API, it is assumed that the attacker can 
read the authorization request. Then it is assumed that also the authorization response leaks to the attacker. Then that the attacker can misconfigure some endpoints at the client, which means that the request in step five is also sent to the attacker and therefore leaks. And finally, it is assumed that the attacker can steal access tokens. So this is a very strong attacker model, but also needed because, as I said, the financial grade API is designed for high risk environments. Now for achieving this degree of security, there are many new security mechanisms used. Due to timing constraints, we won't look into all of them, but we'll take a brief look into OAuth Mutual TLS, which, lets, which, lets, uh, uh, which leads to some, so some access token to be bound to some client. So in the end, uh, yeah, so I will give you the, the high level overview. So we have this in this step, when sending the authorization code for getting an access token, the client is required to do TLS client authentication. So at this point, we have client authentication at the TLS level. And now, the authorization server just remembers the client certificate. So the authorization server remembers that for this access token, this client certificate was created. And what happens now is when sending the access token for getting access to resources, the client is required to use, again, the same certificate for TLS client authentication. And this means that, well, if the attacker steals an access token, he cannot use it because he does not know the corresponding private key. So um, later we will see how this mechanism can be bypassed by the attacker. Next, we take a look into the formal analysis that we did. And as I said, we used the web infrastructure model, which was developed by our working group. And this is a detailed, comprehensive formal model of the web infrastructure. It contains details about communication, about attacker behavior, and many more aspects. On a high level, the model is a Dolebiao based model, which contains several components like browsers, web servers, DNS servers, of course, a network. Then we might have several web attackers or one network attacker. Now we also take a brief look into the browser model. So the browser model contains many different features, for example, different message types like HTTP or HTTPS messages. It also models a complex window and document structure. There are scripts that run on the browser, uh, which can be honest or malicious. And there are many more features modeled. For example, web messaging or WebRTC. Now, the overall approach works as follows. The web infrastructure model is the basis of our formal analysis. And this is by itself independent of the applications we are analyzing. Now, based on the web infrastructure model, we create a formal model of the application we are looking at. So we have the application specific model, for example, of the financial grade API. Then once we have this, we can precisely define security properties. And in the end, we want to prove that these security properties hold true within the model. At this point, it might be that the proof does not go through and you find attacks for which you have to find fixes you have to incorporate this, these fixes into the model and repeat the whole process until your proof goes through. So, as I said, we model the financial grade API, which has many different options and configurations. You can see the, conf uh, the, the possible options and configurations here. So, the financial grade API offers a uh, a profile for read-only access and, a more, and a, a more secure profile for read-write access. There might be uh, web server, so the, the flow depends on whether, for example, you have web server or application clients. There are multiple methods of client authentication and multiple methods of holder of key mechanisms. So we modeled all possible uh, methods that are shown here. And next, we take a look into the security properties that we use for our analysis. 
So the, the central pro security properties are the following. We have authentication, which intuitively means that, well, uh, the attacker should not be able to log in at some client using Alice's identity. Then we have authorization, which is probably the most important property for the financial grade API. And this states that the attacker should not be able to access Alice's resources, for example, Alice's banking account. And finally, we have session integrity, which states that when Alice logs in somewhere, she should be logged in under her own account and using her own resources. Of course, this is very informally here. More formally, for example, authorization looks like this. I won't go into details here, but this essentially means whenever the resource server provides access to Alice's resources, this access is not given to the attacker, neither directly by the resource server nor indirectly by some client. So as already said, we wanted to prove that these properties hold true. However, we were not able to do so initially and we found several attacks, not only on the financial grade API itself, but also on some of the basic security mechanisms. So we found four attacks. And in this presentation, I will show you the first attack, the Cuckoo's token attack. So just a quick recap, we saw that by token binding, for example, using mutual TLS, an access token can be bound to a client, which means that in the end, only this client can use this access token. Now the following is taken from the specification of the financial grade API. It essentially says, well, when the financial grade API client uses mutual TLS or OAuth token binding, an access token is access token phishing resistant as the phished access tokens cannot be used. However, we will see that this is not true. So it is true that the attacker cannot directly use the access token as it is shown on the slide, but the attacker can use the client for, it, uh, for using the access token by injecting it into another flow. So on the next slide, we continue with step sticks. So what happens now is that the attacker just starts a new flow, a second flow, in which he is using the client. And now the main point of the attack is that OAuth has no limits or restrictions on authorization servers. So for one client, you might have Google, Facebook, Dropbox, and many more authorization servers. And these can also be dynamically registered. This is even more interesting for the financial grade API because just in Europe, we can expect to have many thousand banking authorization servers. And of course, you cannot assume that all of them are honest. So in the following, we assume that just one of these authorization servers is malicious, and this is the complete setting. So the attacker is using the client and his own authorization server. So this is again a basic OAuth flow. So the client starts the flow by sending the authorization request. The attacker logs in into his own authorization server and essentially sends back an authorization code. And what happens now at this point when sending the authorization code, the attacker has to send some access token. And here, instead of creating a fresh access token, the attacker simply injects the stolen access token into this flow. Well, we said that this access token is bound to the client, which means the client can use it for getting access to Alice's resources. And of course, through this client, the attacker also gets access to Alice's banking account. Now the mitigation that we propose for this attack looks as follows. The client should be required in the last step to send the expected issuer of the access token to the resource server. So just uh, say, okay, I got the access token from the attacker authorization server. And at this point, the resource server can stop the flow because typically in OAuth, one resource server manages resources of one authorization server, which means that the resource server can detect that uh, this access token was injected into this flow and can stop the flow. So we propose fixes for all attacks that we found. And then we're able to prove that within 
our model, the financial grade API is secure. Now I come to the last point. As mentioned in the beginning, we are collaborating with the working group to fix the standard. And we even initiated an OAuth security workshop for regular meetings with the IETF and the OpenID Foundation to improve the standards related to OAuth. For example, the financial grade API. That's it. Thank you very much. So, uh, speaking as someone who works for a bank, uh, token binding is this fantastic idea. Um, you know that Google pulled support for it last October. And also, within a bank, uh, there are a couple of problems with token binding. Uh, outbound, uh, token binding breaks reverse proxies, and banks like to do traffic inspection. Uh, inbound, nobody wants to trust the API gateway. Uh, and uh, so you basically uh, are stuck that you cannot use token binding in either direction. So listening to you, I'm a little surprised that there is a financial services API that is promoting something that banks won't actually deploy. Do you actually know anything about that? So, so, <clears throat> so sorry, so you mean that banks would not su support it or what do you mean exactly? Because the financial grade API is already adopted. So. Uh, Open Banking UK is or will be using it. That's already uh, a final thing, for example. If there are no more questions, let's thank the speaker and all the speakers of this session. Thanks.